Good afternoon and good evening, everyone. We have a great turnout this evening. Hi, Linda. Hi. How are you? Oh, Hi, Cynthia. Good. So good to see you. You too. Oh, what a great hangout this is going to be. Uh, I, I hope everyone has their creative juices flowing. I was thinking I'm putting on my tie dye, my favorite shirt, my Unite for Her tie dye, because it is, is helping me feel creative tonight. So we're so <laughs> excited you're here. All right, welcome to our virtual hangout. Uh, I will give everyone a few moments to come into our Zoom, to get settled. Uh, Sue is out of town at a conference this week. She's at SABCS in San Antonio, staying very busy, but I know she would love to join us this evening. So she's sad. Um, she can't be with us, but uh, so you just have me, but uh, it'll be a wonderful, it'll be a wonderful hangout of creativity. And I will be sure to mention in just a few moments, the materials that we'll need for this evening. So you'll have a few minutes to run around and gather some things around your house so we can all create together. So I will um, give a couple, a few couple minutes to let some others come in. And as we have uh, members join us this evening, let me introduce myself. So my name is Erin Pellegrin. I am the Director of Culinary Nutrition and Education at Unite for Her, many of which you know I'm often hosting our digital education events with Sue. Uh, so I will be assisting Jacqueline this evening as she moves through uh, our Hangout and our creative project this evening. Um, so... Uh, for those that may not have seen the recommended materials, let me read to you what you can gather over the next few minutes before we get started. So if you want to grab a few sheets of paper, some pastels or markers or crayons, paint or watercolors, if you have colored pens or pencils, anything that you can be creative with in any sort of material or um, forum, feel free to grab those and have them handy. That's all we'll need for this evening. So I wanna welcome everyone that's hopped into our December virtual hangout. Um, we have Jacqueline that is with us from Chicago. So we'd love to hear where everyone is coming from this evening. I am tuning in from Center City, Philadelphia. So it is dark already where I am. So maybe I have some neighbors joining us, but I know that we have members from all across the country. So hopefully, We'll cover uh, all coasts. I do, let me share my screen as we kick off. So um, I do wanna give a big thanks. Uh, we like to start off our education events by just thanking our sponsors because they truly are um, the arm that allows us to, to continue to bring you really wonderful events like this evening and really important subjects each month. So. Uh, I want to give a big thanks to our digital education sponsor, West, this evening, and we have additional support from Daiichi Senkyo, Merck, Lilly, and GSK. They have been huge supporters all year long, and they will be with us to wrap up 2023 as well. So big thanks to our education sponsors tonight. Um, for those that may... Uh, that may be new to our digital education events, I want to remind everyone um, to please mute yourself as we move through. There will be some time, plenty of time at the end for sharing your um, creative work and the inspiration behind it. But of course, if you have questions, you're welcome to raise your hand in Zoom. You're welcome to utilize the chat. I will be monitoring that for Jacqueline this evening. So feel free to engage as you feel comfortable. We are also recording tonight's virtual hangout and it will be in our HER library. So if you ever want to come back and just work through this activity again, you are certainly welcome to do that um, because you know it's a really wonderful outlet, especially throughout the holidays that can be a little bit more stressful sometimes than other times of the year. And then I want to just give a couple reminders. We have two more digital education events to look forward to in December. So our next digital education event is our speaker series happening tomorrow evening. And we are bringing back the most popular subject that was viewed last year, which was uh, breast cancer and alcohol. So I will be chatting through the nutritional 
aspect of alcohol intake and how that can affect overall health and well-being. And then I will be joined again by Dr. Scott Siegel, uh, and he will be addressing, you know, that behavioral relationship behind um, drinking alcohol and vibing uh, and really managing social situations and, and really giving a little bit more light as to why it's important to move away from um, consuming a lot of alcohol and how we can do that in a way that fits our lifestyle. So that will be tomorrow evening, 6 p.m. Eastern time, also on Zoom. I'll put all of these links in the chat so that you can join us. It will also be recorded. So if you're not able to attend, you can always come on back and watch at a later date. And then we're wrapping up uh, December with our Ask the Experts. Friday, December 15th, we are streaming onto Facebook. And we're bringing back um, a certified genetic counselor from Penn, the Abramson Cancer Center, Danielle McKenna. She's been with us before and she's outstanding. And she is asking all of your Q&A about genetic testing, what it means, who needs it, um, you know, how to decipher the results. If you had genetic testing a long time ago, should you have it again? So she'll be answering all those questions. And of course, you can submit your own questions ahead of time uh, that I can pass along to her as well. So that you don't have to register for, just pop into our Unite for Her Facebook page, 1 p.m. Eastern time, again on Friday, December 15th. And that will be it for the rest of the year. So with that being said, again, I wanna welcome everyone to our virtual hangout this evening. Uh, we are joined by Twist Out Cancer who is a wonderful partner of ours. And before I give a proper introduction, let me just go through those materials that we can use this evening for our activity for those that may not have seen the list or heard it earlier just a few moments ago. So for our activity tonight, grab a few sheets of paper, grab some pastels, markers, crayons. If you have paint or watercolors, colored pens or pencils, any sort of medium that you can be creative with, you have just a few moments to grab um, to grab your activity. So I love this. So with that being said, let me introduce our uh, really amazing speaker this evening and, and share a little insight about Jacqueline and Twist Out Cancer. So for those of you that are not familiar with Twist Out Cancer, it's a nonprofit organization that provides psychosocial support to cancer survivors and their loved ones through the creative arts. They are a global community that enables anyone touched by cancer to connect, create, support, and inspire. Jacqueline Carmody is a Chicago-based licensed clinical professional counselor, and she's a registered board-certified art therapist. She is the director and creator of Twist Out Cancer's signature Twist Shop program, and is enthusiastic about bringing this un unique creative arts therapy program to the cancer community, including Unite For Her. Her goal as a therapist is to provide a safe space for everyone and offer them guidance in exploring different ways to explore emotions, creativity, and self-expression. And through most of her uh, workshops uh, that she calls our, her twist shops, just like we're having tonight, the experience is filled with art making, bonding, and, com and camaraderie, all of which we love in these virtual events. So Jacqueline, Thank you so much for being here. We are so excited to have you. Yes, thank you for having me. We love having Unite for Her as a partner and just being able to share the power of art therapy. And so if anyone is hearing about art therapy for the first time through this event or you're not familiar with it, I'm happy to share a little bit about what art therapy is. And so many people um, hear art making and they get flooded with some insecurities or anxiety related to middle school art classes or, you know, having a teacher show them a picture and everyone in the class needing to create the same thing. That is not what art therapy is. There is no right or wrong way to engage with tonight's directive. Just by showing up, you have done it correctly. You don't even have to make a mark on the paper if you don't want to. If you just want to listen and observe and just be present with the community tonight, that is A-OK. -okay. If you want to take it a little bit further and engage in the art making, I promise you, you will feel something special within yourself. You'll put all of those worries, those anxieties, those stressors, those to-do lists on the shelf for a little bit and really just connect with yourself and what wants to be expressed through the art making. And so a few differences between an art class and an art therapy session is 
I am going to be the guider of what feels good, help guide you in different ways to express yourself, feel connected to the materials, feel connected to the images, and really explore yourself, explore the others, and have fun. That's the number one thing is have fun tonight. We won't be judging each other's artwork, comparing each other's artwork. There's no good or bad art tonight. Um, if you draw stick figures, that's okay. If you just make a line or a squiggle on the paper, that's okay. Um, so just have fun, if anything. Um, and if after tonight you have more questions or curiosities about how art therapy can be incorporated into your self-care routine, into your psychosocial support team, or any way that you feel art making might just help you get to that place or feel better, feel free to reach out to the TWIST team or ask me any direct questions. I'll make sure to put my email in the chat because I have been an art maker my entire life and have held space through art making for all different types of emotions, specifically related to cancer experiences that I have been a part of with my family. So helpful to be a resource for all of you in that journey. Uh, but tonight, we're going to be really focusing on shifting our perspective and our intentions to love. And bear with me while I share my screen with everybody, and I will explain a little bit more about what we will be getting into. Okay, if I could just get some affirmations that the screen is loading and you can hear and see me okay. It looks so great. Awesome. So tonight we are going to be exploring Twist Hearts. Um, Twist Hearts is a really unique, cool program that Twist Out Cancer specifically developed for organizations and communities to participate in together. And so the image that you see was actually created by um, a junior high school outside of Chicago called Northbrook Junior High. And teachers, staff, students, families all came together to create this big mural. And it was really cool. One of our art therapists actually handed out these awkward shapes to all different types of people. They made their mark and then passed them around. And everyone kind of made their individual mark on the awkward shapes. And then when they put them together, it was actually creating this bigger mural. And so um, that community specifically had been going through just some difficult times. A few families were going through treatment and experiencing cancer. And so they brought us in to kind of reconnect them to the love of communities, the love for one another, the love for their school, their friends, and really help them use art therapy to say something through images because sometimes it's really hard to talk about how we feel about someone or something, but the artwork can do that for you in a really cool way. So I just wanted to share the background around tonight's intervention and also just show this beautiful mural that was created and hopefully it can inspire you through the colors um, and through the lines. Um, so I wanted to share some artists that professionally explore um, the power of love, the meaning of love, and the connection to love through their artwork. So Jim Dine, show of hands, is anyone familiar with Jim Dine's work or has anyone been fortunate enough to see it in real life or virtually? So he is an artist that takes the most stereotypical symbol of love and just replicate it in these enormous paintings that are really powerful. And I have personally never seen one in real life, but from people who have, and from just reading about it, when you are in front of one of his pieces, you feel like you are being hugged by the artwork and something about it just embodies love and connection. And he's inspired by the people in his life. And so if this is a style that you are inspired by, you can definitely create some Jin Dine esque artwork. Um, another amazing artist that explores love through his artwork is Romero Brito. 
he actually inspired that first mural that you saw. And so he is the founder of the Happiness Project. The Happiness Project is brought to different communities to break up these larger pictures and then just fill them in with these bold colors, these bold patterns. And so this is actually my favorite direction to go in with tonight's activity. And so if you have a thick black marker or black paint or something where you can create a design, um, as you see with the black lines, his approach is really cool. Um, and then you just fill it in with fun patterns and play around with color. So if you have watercolor and you want to drop in the watercolors, you can explore it that way. I'm happy to share more techniques on how you can channel your inner Romero Brito. Uh, but again, the happiness project is just a really joyful way to express community, express happiness, and his direction or directive that he gives people when they're participating is to really tap into when was the last time you felt happiness and create it on the paper. And so this image was somebody's dog that they felt. Somebody felt the love that they shared with their partner and they have a little goldfish in their house. And I mean, this one, you can see the landscape. Someone had just said when they stare at the sun and they you know, look at the sun and the sun rising every day. They just feel empowered by the nature and the love that they feel when they channel back to nature. Um, and another amazing favorite. Um, she is so famous right now. She is blowing up. Yo Yoyoi Kusama. Show of hands, has anyone heard or seen her artwork anywhere? She's a very cool chick. She is an artist from Japan. And her story is, as an artist growing up in Japan, there's very few female artists um, that are recognized and given a platform in Japan. And so she really fought her way to the top and showed herself as a powerful female and really just showed people the power of what her artwork could do. And through her story, she would interact with so many different people all over the world and how she would remember them and remember herself as all of these little dots. And so she saw all of the connections and all of the people that she would interact with or work with creatively as these dots. And she would just make a ton of dots and then turn them into something bigger. And I personally love her pumpkins. She makes these larger than life pumpkins that are so cool. Um, and so if you are intrigued by Yayoi Kusama tonight and you want to make individual dots and don't really know where you want to take it, but you just want to add colorful dots and turn them into a shape or an image that reminds you of love or your connection to love, be inspired by Yayoi Kusama. Um, and so the reason I showed these three artists tonight is because love is very fluid through their artwork. And um, what we're gonna think about tonight is what is your personal definition of love? So before you get started, I really want you to think about how you would define such an ambiguous and vague word. It can mean so many different things. It could be expressed as a verb, be expressed as a noun. It could be something we feel, something we do. We've got the five love languages um, where people give gifts as a form of love. We receive gifts and we feel love. We give a hug. We give a kiss. We engage with physical touch. Um, quality time, maybe going for a walk with a friend or sitting on the phone chatting or maybe sending a meme or a text is an exchange of how you show love. Maybe you're somebody who's an acts of service person. Are you someone who really feels love when somebody gets the groceries done for you or you know, cleans the basement or does a chore or a task that, know, that they know would be daunting to you and helps make your life easier? Or maybe you're the one who loves engaging in acts of service. Um, words of affirmation when we tell people things or we share how we feel about someone or what we appreciate about them through words or through letter writing. 
another form of love. So again, there's no right or wrong way to explore your personal definition of love um, and explore what is your relationship with being a creator or an artist. So tonight we're going to be doing 2D art with the materials that we have. But if we were in a group, maybe we would be having a dance party together and listening to some music or, you know, writing songs, writing poems. What is your outlet for being a creator? And how do you channel that? And so many people are like, I don't know how to draw, but I know how to sing or I know how to move my body to show that I love something or that I'm having fun. So don't let the virtual space stop you from tapping into how you naturally create. Um, also fashion, how many people express themselves through fashion or through cooking or through, you know, something that is not necessarily your typical art form, but is how you show up to the world. And so maybe you create a picture of you wearing your coolest outfit that makes you feel special in the world and connected to the world. Again, this is a time and space to really tap into what makes you feel love or the emotion of love or just the energy of love tonight. Being an artist or creative does not depend on skill level. So again, if you aren't a professional at something, it doesn't mean that you aren't that type of artist or aren't that type of creator. You are. Um, so I want you to explore the symbols and images that connect you to the experience when you think about love. What types of love relationships do you invite into your life? Self, family, friends, community, pets. Erin, I know in Philly, the sports love is like very deep. <laughs> so sports love, sports teams love. So how do you tap into that connection with others or with yourself? in your clubs, in your neighborhoods. Unite for Her is such an amazing community that every time I come on a call and do a twist shop or participate in an event, the love is just like radiating through the screen. And so you are welcome to take this in any direction you want. If your thread of cancer shows up in your piece, that is totally okay. If that has been something that has prevented you from tapping into your self-love, or maybe it's brought in more love that you forgot even existed. Let yourself be open to it. But if you also just want a space tonight where that thread of cancer goes on the shelf, that is also okay. Um, so I am going to stop sharing my screen, but I will copy paste that last slide into the chat. So now we are going to dive into some art making. Um, I'm going to check in with everyone around um, my time. It's going to be 440, but if you're on the East Coast, it's going to be around 540. So that'll give us about 20 minutes to process. If I'm noticing that people need more time, I'll give more time. But just know with many of us on the call, if we want to share and connect more, we'll check in at uh, 440. But I'm not going to put on any music, so if you want to mute yourself and listen to some music, whatever gets you going in the background, strongly encourage it. I am also going to turn my screen like this so that it feels like we're in the same room making art together. If anyone else wants to share their camera on their artwork, go for it. If not, we'll all come back together at uh, 20 till and share some love. Feel free to ask any questions in the chat or you can come off mute and just ask me directly if you have a question. But I will put that directive in the chat and I'm also happy if Unite for Her wants to send the directive out to anybody who just wants to see those images or remember those names at any point.
Check in in about five minutes. If anyone is feeling they need more time, just let me know in the chat. Um, but we'll bring the group back together and we can start.
kind of make some last marks or kind of get your piece to a place where you feel comfortable just stepping away from it. That doesn't mean you have to be done with it. That doesn't mean it has to be complete. It just means you're at a place where you feel good pausing and joining the group in some group discussion, connection, sharing. So with the sharing portion, the only thing that I ask is that if you hear any stories or personal information or anything that anyone shares about their artwork and is there, and it resonates with you and it makes you feel good or it makes you feel empowered and you want to share that share your experience of the group oh can you guys hear me okay okay uh, someone had just said that the the volume wasn't good but if it does if you can't hear me let me know um, and so if anything resonates with you or you just feel so inspired by something someone shares, all I ask is that you share it through your lens and through your experience and we maintain the integrity of the personal sharing and the stories that people bring to the group so that we can maintain a safe space for future Unite for Her groups and for people to know this space can be trusted. This space is where we can share, connect, and heal. And hopefully, if you weren't able to finish, you will come back to it or it will inspire you to create um, in any way that you are a creator. Um, I know just every time I do a group, whatever I listen to on my drive home tonight is going to be inspired by this group. And so... Um, Music is always my favorite way to kind of process after. Um, so what we will do is there are a lot of us. We can't all share at once, and we may not have time for everyone to share. But if it's okay with Aaron, if you don't have a chance to share, but you want people to see your image, can they email you the image? And then maybe there's a group or a Facebook group or somewhere where these images can be seen and appreciated. Um, or at the end, we can even all hold up what we've created. But if you are someone who really wants to share tonight and talk about what came up for you, um, just put your name in the chat. Give me a little wave so I can go in order. Um, you can just say, I want to share, and then we'll go down the list. Um, I can start us off. Um, I created... A nature scene with the mountains. So I was inspired by Romero Brito with his thick black lines. And I created a nature scene because my cousin who lives in California, she and I always go on adventures and we just love each other so much. And we don't talk when we hike. We just walk and we're together and if you saw us, you would think we were strangers because we're just not even talking, but we're just spending this quality time together, taking in these views. And it's my favorite thing in the world. I love it. And so I thought about her and I thought about hiking and I just want to give her a hug. <laughs> so that is what inspired me tonight. Um, Carolyn, if you want to go, you can take yourself off mute and share whatever you feel comfortable sharing. Do we want to change the view so that will it move to the speaker? Okay. Uh, hopefully you can see this. Hi, I'm Carolyn. Um, it might be hard to read, but I was just inspired to do a lot of heart with love. Um, I wrote love in the middle, but it's, it's probably hard to see on the camera. But I put all the a lot of things that I love. Um, I love theater. I love acting. I love movies, and I, I do that in my spare time when I can. Um, I'm a little upset that right now I can't do any filming because I'm recovering from my breast surgery, and probably not till the new year. Um, also travel. I put down travel, cruising. We go on a lot of cruises. Me, my husband, and my daughter and friends and family, and I have friends and family on my heart too. Um, and just went with a lot of colors 
And I also have pets in there because I have a dog and a cat. Um, not that they get to travel with us, but, um, you know, it's spending time with them at home, especially during the holidays and things too. There might, right now my daughter did move out a couple of years ago because she's 25 and um, I miss her at home, but at least, um, you know, we're connected phone and so she comes home. But anyway, so just that's kind of what my inspiration was. A lot of colors and love and heart. I love it. And, and you did the watercolor first? The uh, I did the hearts first. I, I tried to do the dark black lines like the Brito. Because I've seen on the cruise ships, I've seen a lot of his artwork. Oh, that's so neat. I, that makes me yeah. so happy. Yeah, yeah. So um, I was trying to do dark lines, but um, with the black, with a yeah. marker first. And then I started doing watercolors and a little bit of markers in between. So that's Very my cool. artwork that I wanted to share. And this is just wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. I don't want to take up too much time. Other Thank people you for share. sharing and participating. We appreciate having you in the group. Um, I will move down to Linda, if you want to share your work. And hello. Linda, you are muted. I'm just going to ask. You just got to click the unmute button. I wanted to make sure I was the only Linda. Mine takes, mine takes a lot of explanation because the bottom is my cat who's posing for me nicely, sitting right here in the chair next to me, her chair now. She's beside my office chair, so I'll chair. Um, and this season, whoops, I realized that one of the things I don't get to do much anymore is wrap presents. I mean, I really like to wrap presents. And because I live so far from all of my family, um, I don't do that. Yeah. But I volunteered to wrap presents for anybody that wants their presents wrapped. So if you live near me, you want presents wrapped. I even have beautiful paper and ribbon and everything. So I miss that. I um, and then this, you can't tell what this is, but it's a beautiful table setting. I love to set a really pretty table. I love to cook. And then to die, you can't read these because they're backwards. I was going through my email and it was just people I can't be with now saying, you know, lovely things like I love you and I miss you. Um, that's who I would have at my table. Amazing. I love that. I love the, just the, the movement in the piece too, like just shifting around and just tapping into the holiday season and what nostalgia brings back up for you. Mm -hmm. and, um, when you were talking about the wrapping of the gifts, um, my partner loves wrapping also, and he takes all the artwork in our house and wraps it and puts it on the walls because he just loves wrapping. So we have artwork that's just wrapped in wrapping paper during the holidays. It's really silly, but it's fun. Well, <laughs> uh, and I love that your little cat is joining us. Today. Can you see her? Yeah, she's so sweet. She's usually on the keyboard, so I'm glad she's in her chair. Yes. Um, I don't see anyone else in the chat wanting to share, so if you want to share, just let me know, um, and I can call on you to go next. I see Stacy's hand. Stacy, if you want to come off mute. Hi, Stacy. I can't hear you yet. Can anyone else hear? I can't hear yet. Hmm. Stacy, do you want to show us your work? Um, and then if we can get the volume working for you, we can play that. Oh, I love all of those colors. Those are so cool. Do you want to share in the chat how you did it? We can't hear you. Um, while we are Figuring that out, I see Nancy, if you want to share. Hi, 
Hi, Nancy. Oh, Nancy, you're on mute too. All right. There we go. Yes, this isn't. Oh, I have to lean. <laughs> no, yes. Yes. As you I'm not ahead. sure why that's not showing up, but so I live in a um, 55 and better community and um, I have a sign here that says the name of our street because there's like about 16 people on the street that I consider my dearest friends and they've really supported me through my breast cancer surgery and radiology. We have a thicket behind us and the rails to trails. And I have a picture of my husband and I walking up the trail because we do a lot of nature therapy and I have a heart where we're holding hands, but I really feel grateful for the love that I have with my community on my street. I love that. That is so powerful. Just to know that the people you see every day or wave to just, there's love there through every it, There is. It's really wonderful. And cool. also, I I uh, when I found out last um, January, like the day after New Year's, that I had an abnormal mammogram um, and needed to go through this process every day in January, I paint, I do watercolor. So I painted a snowman every day and then sent it to somebody who um, I was connected to. And that art therapy really helped. Oh, yeah. Just to know, like waking up and having a mission of something to do that you choose, you want to do to start your day. I think that's so powerful throughout treatment because you lose so much autonomy and right. kind of render control. And so choosing something that's joyful is so important and i love that you chose snowmen to do actually that's there was something online that says advice from a snowman so i wrote that in all of the cards <laughs> before i sent it out so it was a lot of fun how joyful that's thank you amazing. thank you for sharing so i see maria if you want to share and then we'll do pam next um and then see where we're at with time after that. Hi, Maria. Oh, you're muted. Thank you. Oh, you're still muted. Sorry. I don't know how it went back on. There we go. Um, mine is pretty concrete um, because there's so much about this diagnosis that's concrete. Mm -hmm. Um, like you said, you lose a lot of control and I was inspired a little bit with the dots. Um, many people, there are many dots because there's so many of us. And my prayer is that we all experience peace. This is why I broke it up with some blue and, um, yeah, that's it. That's just doodling. So thank you for letting me share. Thank you for joining us tonight. And I love I love the dots and that you're inspired by you always dots to just represent being bigger or being part of something bigger than us and being a dot in this this chaotic world we live in. But you organize the chaos. Um and okay, we'll go to Pamela and then Kathleen and well, I liked that Maria had a cross. I tried to do one, and I'm not a freehand kind of girl, so I've covered it up. Um, obviously, the polka dots I liked as well, but that is a cake. <laughs> that is my version of a cake, <laughs> because that's how I show up. That's how I show love, is baking for other people. Um and that's something that I've not been able to do much of this last year. So I'm looking forward to getting back to showing love in that fashion, but to try to do it in a more healthy manner <laughs> than what it's been done in the past, not just for myself, but for, for whoever is on the receiving end. Um, 
and I think it was Nancy that um, was on there earlier, but paying it forward, even if it's some kind of artwork and in some way, just being able to, to bring joy to other people, that's um, a good way to do it. So I was, I really enjoyed hearing that. So this has been great. Thank you. I love your image of the cake. It's so joyful. <laughs> There's always cake in a joyful moment. So it's like, just, I make that like connection in my mind when I see cake. So fun. Um, Kathleen, if you want to share, and then I think we might be tight on time. So I will share some ways we can keep this conversation going or just continue to feel inspired. Okay. Mine's really simple. I don't know how y'all did so much so fast. <laughs> I was like, wow, you guys are so talented. <laughs> um, mine's very simple. Um, I'm just, um, representing the heart. And I feel like as long as my heart keeps beating, it gives me breath. And with breath, I have life. So that's kind of what I was trying to do is get like some movement in such dark lines at the same time, but trying to show like movement there. Simple. <laughs> and I see natural light coming in your space. Are you somewhere sunny? Where the I day am. Or... I'm in Palm Springs, California. Oh, lovely. Actually, I don't need the sweater. I'm a little hot. <laughs> I can like feel the warmth coming through your heart. It's a hot in here. <laughs> and we have like pink Dark Christmas trees here. here. <laughs> oh, so fun. So fun. Very amazing. Um, I am so inspired by everyone on this call tonight. And I, I know an hour is so short, but it's, so great to be able to check in with everybody. Stacy, I just want to circle back if you were able to get your microphone to work, if you want to share a little bit. Oh, uh, well, if anyone does want to share more or keep this conversation going, if you want to share your artwork with Erin um, or the Unite for Her community, I just want to see how everyone expresses love. And I'm just grateful that. I was able to be a part of tonight's virtual hangout. Um, my email I will put in the chat, uh, but I will let Aaron kind of wrap us up tonight and just thank you again, everybody. I'm so inspired. This was wonderful. Jacqueline, thank you so much for being here and leading us through this amazing activity. We have such wildly talented members. So um, thank you so much for joining. If anyone does want to send me any picture, you can text me. We're happy to share that in our Her Library as inspiration for others. And as always, you're welcome to come back and listen to Jacqueline's presentation and kind of walk yourself through the activity again. So this will always be on our Her Library. So thank you for those that shared and for being vulnerable. And thank you for everyone for just being with us tonight for our virtual hangout. Uh, hopefully we will see you at our other digital education events um, this month to round us out for the year, starting with our speaker series tomorrow evening. Um, and then I wanna give one final thanks again to our sponsor, uh, West Pharmaceutical, our presenting sponsor, and Daiichi Sankyo, Merck, Lilly, and GSK for supporting us with our entire digital education series. So with that, uh, I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of your evening. Hopefully this creativity will take you through the night and inspire you to keep um, working a little bit and channeling that loving energy. And Jacqueline, thank you again for joining us. Have a wonderful rest of your evening, everyone. Take care.